I walked into boxing by like complete happy accident. There's like millions of people tuning in to watch it. If like everybody came out looking like Mike Tyson in some black shorts, it would be fairly boring. Yeah, I was like, what do you give the man that literally has everything and can buy anything in the world? And I was like, he doesn't have a pair of shorts with his face. <laughs>
for boxing. So I'd obviously like Googled boxing shorts and then I'd seen, obviously I'd been to the Amir Devon Alexander fight and like Devon came out in this full sparkly sequin outfit. And I'm thinking, oh, you know, maybe my world does kind of cross what, over into Why this. is it so similar? That's yeah. what I was going to ask. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it kind of, it, you know, it's a custom outfit for an event, just whether it be shorts or a dress or whatever it is that you're making. But they're kind of like the same principle applies. Mm. Yeah, so sequins, why is, sequins are always very important. I remember my first ever shorts getting made like 11 years of age and it had like a, a slit in it that revealed sequins underneath. Like Everyone wants to reveal sequins. Yeah. <laughs> it's, like, um, it's the secret of life. Yeah. So they look good under lights, don't they, sequins? They do. It's a show, you know. There's like millions of people tuning in to watch it. If like everybody came out looking like Mike Tyson in some black shorts, it would be fairly boring. You know, it is an added element to get people interested in it, I feel, you know, and there's something good to look at and it's interesting. People come out with feathers and tassels and all that kind of stuff. Mm. So as you might have guessed, this episode, George, is about shorts and fight kit. Fight kit, in particular. yeah. Because um, we haven't done it. We've been, going, we've been wanting to do an episode on kit for a long time. But with, the, with your introduction to the sport, were you still figure skating at that point? Or did you finish? I'd, I'd finish personally, but I was, that was my job was designing and making the costumes. Okay, right, so yeah. you would stop. So you used to be a figure skater. I then did. Then you like, I'll make some kit. I went to fashion college and finished that, and it was kind of like a dream job, because ice skating's very niche. Like, boxing's niche, ice skating is <laughs> a million times more niche. Um, and it was always a bit of a dream, thinking, oh, I'll make costumes one day and, like, make a living from it. And then it kind of became a reality, and I was doing it and loving it, and, you know, kind of my own boss and all those good things. And then the boxing kind of came along and I was doing both side by side for a while and I remember somebody said to me you won't be doing ice skating costumes in a year and within I was like deeply insulted oh my gosh that's my life how dare you and then within six months the ice skating was (laughs) was dead pretty much it was just boxing Mm. and you were doing them yourself right Uh, in the start yeah in the beginning yeah I can sew I don't really do as much of the sewing these days have to admit but I can if I need to Mm. If the need arises, I can get on the sewing machine. Mm. So what has been the, your favourite pair of shorts or your favourite kit that you've made for a fighter? In terms of favourite fight outfit, probably Ben Whitaker's sushi-inspired Japanese Tiffany blue kimono looking. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, what fight was that? That was a couple of fights ago. A couple of fights back. Yeah. The and one before the Prince Nassim homage yes. leopard thing. It was the one before that. And... Y- is it right in saying he, he got that idea from a restaurant? Yeah, he sent me a photograph of a curtain in a sushi shop. and was like, this is the next outfit. And I was like, leave it with me. I've got you. Don't worry. So <laughs> what happens there then? Do you have to call the restaurant and ask where they buy their curtains from? <laughs> Do you travel down there and maybe try and snip, snip a little yeah. corner out? Just rip the curtain off as I go into the bathroom. <laughs> no, I kind of will take inspiration from the colour elements like that's on things whether it be details images whatever it is and then kind of evolve that into a design um and then send it to him and nine times out of ten it's like yeah nailed it first time Mm. (laughs) yeah so sushi restaurants that's the place for inspiration sounds like something you'd do yeah that's a good idea yeah no yeah there was um there was a brand there was a company called do do chump um, and that the tie, the infamous tie that I wore, the James you know, Gale, the James Gale the tie. They used to make these mad floral ties, and then it went to floral shirts. And I was like, that'd be cool for a pair of boxing shorts. And yeah, I wrote to them, and then they said, yeah, we'll send you the um, material. We'll make one up, but just never pulled the never trigger happened. on it. But no. I it, was quite, it was very bright, and uh, that's quite cool, isn't it? Under but I think it's like things like that that are different that are eye-catching. And I think fighters are realising now, if I make a bit of a name for myself by being a bit out there and stand out from the crowd, they're noticing, like you saw with Ben Whitaker's last outfit that I did, his following went up like 100,000, like overnight mm. pretty much, because all the attention and people are like, oh my gosh, the outfit. And it's it does add to it. As much as you kind of think, oh, it's just a pair of shorts or it's just a robe or a jacket, it does kind of have it's kind of creating you and your persona as a fighter that people recognize and especially on like a global scale it's it is important mm. to like not overlook it was it hard for you at the start to break in because obviously it's, a, it's an industry and a sport that's already well served of people making shorts and stuff like everyone knew who's making the shorts and then it's like oh now we've got someone else 
Yeah, I mean, I kind of just fell into it. So I don't think it was never my intention to be like, right, I'm going to start doing the one. these shorts now. Yeah. So everyone's going to come to me. Like, it's not really about that. I don't really mind where people go to get the shorts from. It's, you know, if you're coming to Fight Label, it's because we're doing something a bit different. And we don't probably have the biggest client list, but the ones we do are quite out there. You know, like we work with AJ and Canelo and Floyd and Ben and, and stuff. And it's those that iconic outfits that, I guess I spend the time doing, you know, we could churn loads and loads of shorts out for loads of fighters all over, which would be great, but it's just not what our business model is. It's more about the couture. It's like going to a high-end designer and having something very custom made. You know, if you wanted a turquoise alligator skin, I'll source it and it'll be a real, you know, mm. it's, we don't kind of do imitation stuff. It's all very luxurious Are high-end you- stuff. Are you, would you ever be conflicted if someone said, I want alligator shorts or I want a Dalmatian puppy shorts or something? You know, I think is that there would yeah, where do you draw the, the line? line? I mean, we have kind of ethical certified suppliers all over the world and everything comes with like the site certificates and all these things. If somebody wants that, you know, it's kind of the Floyd Mayweathers of the world that want real Python and we'll get that in from New York or Bali or wherever it's it's sourced from. But it's... Yeah, I don't think I'd want to do like a... Yeah. <laughs> I might have to stick to a print for that one. That, that's the kind of thing that sets Fight Label apart. If we were going to do a print of something, like leopard print, for example, I will spend days, hours, weeks searching for the exact right leopard print. It won't just be a quick Google and whatever comes up. It's a real research sourcing mission for me. It's not just a kind of that'll do mm-hmm. I'm kind of I wouldn't even be happy to get the scissors to the fabric unless I love it <laughs> mm-hmm. I, mem- I remember when I first interviewed you, you you said like what you really want to do is make some shorts for Floyd Mayweather that was like the goal at the time <laughs> yeah and you did it like so what was that like when it actually came about yeah that was well I remember the first time I made Floyd some shorts they were actually a present they were a gift so somebody that puts on like evening with different fighters in fact, the guy that put on the evening with Amir Khan, which is when I first met Amir, so he then did evening with Floyd Mayweather, and he was like, you can be in charge of gifting Floyd something. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, what do you gift Does he the like man? figure skating? Yeah, I was like, what do you gift the man that literally has everything and can buy anything in the world? And I was like, he doesn't have a pair of shorts with his face on it. So I made him a pair of shorts with his face on it, and then I fully crystallized his face in Swarovski crystals. And I met him gave them to him and he took them and started running around the room screaming I'm gonna wear these for my 50th fight and this was after he'd retired so he'd never had any mention of a 50th fight coming out of retirement then all the news media outlets like jumped on it like Floyd's coming out of retirement and like these are what he's gonna wear just because of the shorts just because of the shorts and it kind of that was the first thing and then he didn't come out of retirement for quite some time and then about two years later he fought Connor and mm. then we did the shorts for the... Oh, so he didn't wear those present ones. You oh, no, did he some wore more. those for um, the promo shoot for the McGregor fight. I remember seeing the promo shoot and I was like, oh my gosh, those are mine. <laughs> They've been in a cupboard for two years and he's now got them out and worn them. Then I thought, right, this is owning yeah. of the gates for the next thing because obviously he's not going to wear those now. He's just worn them for... Oh, so you did the Conor McGregor fight shorts? Yeah. What was the process like? We'll get into the process for sort of normal boxers. Okay in a minute but so with Mayweather how does that work does he personally go look I want this I've been in this sushi restaurant or I want this colour so Floyd's probably more of like a visual like if you show him something really beautiful like going into a store and you see something nice and you want to buy it so he wouldn't be as involved in like the design process so I'll send him designs and he'll be like kind of yes and no but it's kind of more coming from my mindset to lead the design Mm. process so he has to wait and see something and then yeah, the goes on like, and like on that's it, it. yeah. Mm. What was it, were they great, were they great ones? They were black with, um, I kind of immortalized his face into a million dollar Mayweather note in gold leaf and oh, embossed yeah, it on it. the black leather. Yeah. Yeah, they were so, really nice. So yeah, anything with a pound coin on it, he's up for it. Or a dollar. Mayweather or a dollar, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. was, they were really nice. Um, <laughs> interesting process. And then, you know, he's had, Several exhibition fights. Um, you do that? You've done those, those as well, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He'll just text me and be like, oh, I need some shorts for this. And then I'll just send a design and then that's kind of it. <laughs> so is that the process for everyone then? So how? So say someone's like fight label, I like that. I want some cool shorts. 
How do, how does that start? What's Some the process? Some people will like just go in the Instagram DMs and be like, hey, I'm fighting on such and such a day. I like this and send like a picture. I mean, we went for a long time of not really posting stuff on social media because a lot of the time it comes down to me to do stuff and I'm like, I can't do everything and keep the social media going and keep all the shorts going. So I kind of went a bit quiet and then I was a bit sad when shorts we've made kind of get replicated and they don't look as good as what I did and it kind of makes me feel sad for my clients that have bought that design from me um so I kind of just went a bit quiet on social media and I thought I need to start posting again so I've now got an apprentice that's working with us on social media which is great so that's got going again but yeah fighters will be like oh I've seen this I like this can you do me something like that which is fine but I'm kind of like I want you to have your own shot so I want this design to be you about you so it's nice to say oh you liked that but it's kind of we can take elements of that like what part of that is it that you like and I can design it for you and then we kind of go from there mm. and is that hard do people actually know what they like people don't always know what they like or they'll they'll see they like how something looked on a certain person but that doesn't always translate or they'll be like I like this from this and this from this and this from this but then when you put all those elements in a blender it doesn't always taste great when it comes mm. out of the mm. other side so it's kind of take like understanding who the fighter is and for me to, you know, if somebody goes, oh, I need some shorts next weekend, like we can turn things around quick if they want something simple. But it's for me, it's more about the process and the design. And, you know, I'll prepare like mood boards and inspiration for how the design comes to the like how we've kind of conceptualized ideas into an actual design. Mm, that's great. Yeah. Um, have you kept fight label quite exclusive like if there's like a scruffy fighter out there who always just looks trampy <laughs> and he wants some of your kit will you say I, either we've got a, a total overhaul like and smarten you right up or just, you're not in <laughs> or it's just a now no i mean anybody can come to fight label i mean i, I, I guess fight label has somehow because they're modeling your kit like you know yeah. if you're a designer and and someone's wearing your clothes badly mm. does that has that ever happened have you had a fight you've made lovely no. kit for and he's just he's wore it too high like the shorts are too high no, or they're too low think and so. he's, he's I got think like... people just I don't know I guess you can't help everybody <laughs> <laughs> Oh no! Go on. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't think. No, we're not named. Who, who, who's, who's come back for repeat business? But you've and said, like, "Oh fuck, so nah. you look terrible in this." So, mate. Um, no, I think everybody just wear the, just when wear they it. wear fight label, they look great. It's more of a feeling. Mm. Like I can't, I can't describe how fight label feels until you put it on, and then you're like, "Oh yeah, this feels good." Because yeah. we line everything in silk, so they feel really, really beautiful. Mm. Um, they're just quite special things. Like I can't describe it until you see a pair and you're like, oh yeah, I get it. Have you ever had someone come to you with an idea and you're like, that's so shit, mate. That's going to look terrible. Sorry, no. More uh, often than not, I'd imagine. Yeah. I remember many years ago, it was a, a fighter that came into the studio Who's and that? he was who like, was <laughs> I'm not naming names. He was you know like, who you are though. He was like, I want red and white, white fur. And I'm like, hmm, thinking this looks very Santa Claus-esque. Mm. And then he's like, I want a fur waistband, like big fur waistband. And there's actually a photograph somewhere of me. He's got them on. He's like trying them on with the fur waistband. And I'm just looking really concerned, like, and he's like, these are great. And I'm thinking, these that are great. That was Mayweather, wasn't it? Yeah, Mayweather. Santa. <laughs> he did have a, no, I feel like that, but it wasn't Floyd. <laughs> mm. What, and you were like, you look like Santa, mate. This is, like, unless it's Christmas. I was like, are you I not bother? seeing what I'm seeing? Like, this is full Christmas. And the fight was in like July. <laughs> I was like, this isn't the look. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what did you do? Did you just go along I'd with it? I let him do it. In fact, I think I remember one of the officials once said to me, I want those shorts that that guy just fought in because they're just like wild. <laughs> the big furry waistband. We need to try and find someone out there someone will be able to find who that boxer is. <laughs> Give I, us I a city. Like I can see him, is it Sheffield? It actually was. I knew it would be Sheffield. <laughs> it's Kel Brook, isn't it? Yeah. It wasn't Kel. <laughs> Kel has got we'll Kel did him. have some Santa based shorts once. Did he? Many years On purpose? Ago. Yeah, because it was like a Christmas fight. It wasn't okay. July. <laughs> that's fair enough, right? That's the challenge. Find those, find the Santa shorts a July fight. From Sheffield. Um, does anyone ever come to you and be like, Sophie, this is not my strong point, but I want to look really good. Got any ideas? Yeah, most people are like, I don't know what it is, but I know that you will be able to <laughs> <laughs> to curate this out of your yeah. imagination. And then um, what do you do at that point? Just, I just start. Just imagine something. Just start imagining. Like last week, what was the idea? Oh, Evil Knievel was last week's <sighs> idea that somebody had got. And I was like, right, I can make this look really cool and not like a tacky novelty. Evil Knievel, yeah? Mm. Yeah. Was they going to do a ring entrance like... 
on the motorbike. I don't think he is. It sounds like Ben He Whitaker. fights it soon. Like it's Whitaker. not. Yeah. He actually did love Ben's outfit. So it's kind of like a hybrid design that I've come up with. Like Ben meets Evil Knievel, which is it's cool. Mm. So we, we know that, you know, sequins work, tassels work, um, maybe a bit of gold fabric laced in. What Has anyone come to you with anything that, that's new that we haven't heard of yet? Do they want like their grandfather's ashes wo woven in or no you we've know. not had that i mean i did i made ksi once a full led light up robe oh, was that you i've seen that that was me so i turned into an electrician for that week um i did all the wiring and everything for it so there's kind of nothing we can't really do there's just so, yeah so tell us about that what is that is that like christmas lights again back on the christmas theme i managed through to the... find a supplier of fiber optic materials they're actually based in italy and I kind of work with them to develop the fabric because you can't, once you like cut through it, you kind of like cut it then and that's kind of it. So it was kind of, they had to put all the fiber optic strands in the right places so that I could then be able to cut the robe out and sew it. And then I had to wire it all together so that it would actually turn on in the end. And does he have <laughs> like a did. pack of batteries in the pocket? Yeah, a battery pack. <laughs> <Did he? laughs> yeah. You didn't do um, Wilder's kit that made him lose to Fury, did you? No, I didn't. The heavy kit? No. No. Do you ever say that to people? Like, you know, no. you're going to have to walk around in this for 20 minutes. Do you know, some of the, I mean, f from my side, I'm not a fighter, but I feel like the ring entrance is kind of short. So you can carry, you know, if your robe or your jacket's a bit heavy, it doesn't really matter because you're going to take it off anyway. So I don't really think that that's a mm. massive excuse. And I, so I also felt a bit bad for like the people that did make that. Because yeah. I'm like, I don't think it's massively fair to say that it was the outfit was too heavy that made you lose because you mm. you know what the outfit is i'm what i'm fascinated by is what this stuff costs and i wonder if you're going to be guarded good about question this. no like, i'm how, not how much I'm you, pretty how much open you book if somebody contacts me like right i want yeah you know, how much are shorts and a rope and i'm like well how long's a piece of string because you, you know it depends what it's made in what the design is how complicated it is how many days it's going to take us to do if i'm having to ship something in from you know, the US or Italy or wherever it is to, to make it. So I said, it's very difficult for me to just go, it's this much. Because, you know, I don't know what we're making. You haven't told me what you want yet. Like if you were to point at somebody's outfit on Instagram and then ask me how much it was, I can I can look at what we've charged them and figure it out because mm. it's all, we break everything down. So you'll have like your basic shorts price. And then if you've got leather in there or you've got suede or you've got some, so we kind of, it's very easy to, add it up and build your own outfit from something because typically speaking a pair of shorts will take the same amount of time to make but you know if we're then having to apply tassels first and applique or do different bits like that it's all going to kind of impact on it but as a general rule I'll say our shorts start anywhere from like three four hundred mark and go up from there take out the 30 grand Amir Khan ones what's yeah. the most expensive shorts mm. And is it a case like with KSI, you just make a list, you just invoice them at the end. It's like, well, this costs this much. Yeah, I mean, it that. doesn't matter to me whether it's KSI yeah. or a amateur fighter, you know, whatever the outfit is, regardless of who it's for, it takes us X number of hours to make it. So it's kind of chargeable on how long it's taken, not necessarily who they are. Like a good example is Triple G. Like we do his shorts. He has the simplest like satin shorts. He doesn't even want any lining on the inside. Like... We're talking like a 300 quid pair of shorts, you know. Yeah, double R, triple G. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's you know, he doesn't want, you know, all 300 that 300 quid shorts for triple yeah. G. Uh, do you charge him, temp like, do you say our uh, three grand for you anyway? No. Still like 300 quid. It is what it is, you know. We're not in the game to kind of, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you're earning three million on <laughs> yeah, this, yeah. so I'm going to charge you That's one million. That's <laughs> quality, Triple G is 300 quid shorts. Yeah. It is what it is, you uh, know. If, you know, I'd love to go all out and do fancy designs for these people, but if they don't want it, you know, you kind of mm. stuck a little bit there. So I used to have the same shorts, like every time. As in the same, the no, same no, no. pair. Same pair, a new pair every every five. New yeah. pair, but same but like pretty much the same. I'd pick mm. a color, like that Royal was me blue. trying to. Yeah, it was Chelsea blue for yeah. for years. Then I changed to black, um, and they they barely changed. I had a Union Jack on the back, which some people thought was weird because you'd have a Union Jack on your ass, and they were like, yeah. <laughs> "Do you hate your flag?" Like, no, no, no. <laughs> it's the only place it fits, um, and the sponsors would change. Um, how much were you paying oh, not a lot and I think sometimes I w I'd forget to order them and uh, <laughs> they would just get made 
So Su- Susie Wong used to yeah. the company that used to make mine, and sometimes either Wasserman would get them for me. And I said, "Where's the bill? It's been paid for already." Or one of the sponsors would look after us and do it. But um, I always wondered whether that was boring because I was just like, "Yeah, just make me another another pair." I and mean, is that boring you, you for you, or is you're like? Thank God I haven't got to do yeah. weeks of research, you know, trying to find out what I mean, I, I enjoy sexy fish like, by their curtains. <laughs> <laughs> I, I know all these informations now. Um, I enjoy the kind of the design process. I mean, it, like you said, if you've forgotten to order them, you're short on time, then yeah, it does help if fighters like just want this, just do the same kind of thing. You know, that's that's great. But I do like the kind of in-depth process yeah. it's like my creative imagination can kind of run a bit wild and then as fighters go through their careers obviously they've got to keep one up in the shorts haven't they they've got to keep elevating them yeah it's a challenge i love that like anthony josh is a great example because he fights in white pretty much every time so it's kind of how do you reinvent the same pair of white shorts kelbrook was the same he always fought in red and it's for me a blank canvas still every time although i know what the color scheme is for me i want to make sure if you were to line every single pair up that i've done for that fighter that they all have their own like story and they're all different in their own way it's not just kind of let's put a side panel here or let's do put it across this time or you know it's kind of it's different like the fabric might be different might be a slightly different shade of something so it's always like a slight tweak on and you, something you've been doing joshua shorts for ages now long time how did that how did that come about obviously you used to train in Sheffield he did um I met Joshua in like 20 I want to say 2014 2015 okay so you've been going quite a while at that point no it was quite oh that was first that was like a year in like a year in it was less than a year in I started working and so he was like one or two years into his career then Mm. 2013 first pair I made for Joshua was the Gary Cornish fight that that long that was yeah Commonwealth title yeah it was a long time ago yeah and yeah. does Joshua pay for his shorts, or does he, he get does. them free? Good because question. He's, um, or is it? Have you got everybody any clients pays? Who, I don't. Ha- I don't do anything for free. I don't See, get out of bed surpri- for free. <laughs> <laughs> that surprises me because I think that like Mayweather. I mean, is Mayweather paying for his shorts? Yeah. We send him a bill. Oh yeah. That's cool. <laughs> he should pay for them. Yeah, I mean, he's I'm glad he does. Yeah, yes, right? me he's got too. enough money, and you put enough effort in. Um, but you want him to also tag you on it on the post. Yeah. But maybe it doesn't matter to you now because their fight label's big Do enough, you know, yeah? I'm very kind of in my own little bubble and just in my own world with it. And, you know, some people say, oh, you know, all these people that you know, you should be, like, pushing it and getting them to, like, promote you and do things. And I'm kind of just, you know, I, I would never... I never like to kind of overstep the mark or make somebody... Because I would never give somebody something. You know when people, like, give things out for free and then expect the recipient to wear it and to promote it. I'm like, if you want it, I want you to want to buy it because you appreciate it and you respect it and Mm. then you love it. It's like if you save up for a long time, then you buy something that you've truly wanted for so long. You have this connection to it. Whereas if I was to give you something for free, you instantly value it at zero because I've just given it to you and you'd expect me to maybe give you another one. And it's kind of that mentality with Fight Label. I'm like, I could offer all fighters like stuff for free but you know my suppliers aren't going to give me the materials for free you know my staff aren't going to come into work for free so you know the thought process of me then giving it you for free it's already cost me however much and then if the fighter gets oh yeah but I'll do you a post I'm thinking that's great but what's going to happen when all this traffic comes to my website and none of this traffic is a professional fighter so what am I you know going to how am I going to monetize that and earn it back through this because mm. you know so you kind of have to look at the bigger picture and i think yeah i feel you get what you pay for in life and we pride ourselves on luxury and quality and using beautiful fabrics and yeah we probably don't make as much profit as other companies but for me it's the passion and the love of doing it and that i work with kind of the top one percent of these athletes and i enjoy what I do and I love what I do and for me it's more of like a passion thing mm. and for the last 10 years I've built up that reputation of or people that oh fight labels are expensive and I'm like well but again you're getting what you pay for you know I'm sourcing these beautiful materials we're not bashing out 10 pairs of shorts a day to ship here there and everywhere we're working on your outfit the whole team solidly for like three or four days you know you, you've kind of got our undivided attention 
and then you receive it and it's beautiful and you feel like amazing in it mm. and I've never had anybody say oh they don't fit or it's not right you know everything's yeah that was my next question we're so <laughs> like we're really perfectionists and you know I'm not happy unless it's perfect and I wouldn't expect a lot of my clients will say to me like feedback is like this sounds really weird but it looks like the design <laughs> like if you were to look at the paper illustration like the sketch that I've done of the outfit before we've made it and then stand that next to the actual finished product it's like it's just jumped off the paper and that's kind of what's most important to me mm. the real like the realization of the 3d form of the garment from the paper joshua earns a few quid as well he can afford a pair of shorts can he yeah yeah I'm sure he can how much is he involved in the process is he someone not who very cares? No. No, uh, just like he, just make he it likes white. what he likes and you know he is very clean cut, simple, stylish, you know, he'll see, what I like about Joshua is you'll see like fashion pieces, whether it be a coat or something, he'll try it on, whether it's, you know, from a designer brand or wherever, and he'll notice like certain elements, like you might like the shoulders or the waist or the length or whatever it is, and he'll relay that to me and then we can build that into the next outfit. So although people think, oh, it's just another white robe, for us internally, we've seen the like, the small differences that we've made compared to whatever it was last time mm. so we we know what, what the differences are like this one is quite different for this fight um obviously aj has made the white robe his own you know gone are the days of muhammad ali in the mm. long white robe so at some point in muhammad ali's career when he had the people's choice robe it was designed and made by elvis presley's suit maker who made all his stage costumes and it was that I saw it in the Muhammad Ali exhibition that came to London like back in like 2016 or something, 2017, can't remember. The one at the O2? Yeah. yeah and good. it was so beautifully embellished. And I was like, that is just wow. And the fabric was just so different. And I was like, if I can like remake this, but for AJ. So we've kind of done a Elvis Presley. This is like the Elvis robe for AJ. So it's really cool. It's got full like... It's all white with bl really slim black piping and then it's got all these white resin bead, like this beadwork all over it, all white crystals. So it just like glimmers. Like last time we kind of dotted crystals all over it. This time it's like all these jewels. It's just, it's really special. Elvis Presley inspired. It's Elvis Presley this. Do you get, do you get, you sound like you're really attached to this, these garments, like you don't even want to hand them over. Yeah. No, I don't. They're like my children. Like I <laughs> love all of the outfits that we make so much. Um, and like the care that goes into it. Like I hand, like I personally drove it to London to hand it over because it's like, I care about them so much. Mm. Have you had any, I was going to ask, have you had any like stuff you didn't finish on time, anything late, horror stories in that sense? No, I mean, what's scary about the world that we work in, you know, especially working probably like 75% plus of our clients are based in the US, shipping. So I'm like a shipping expert. I can <laughs> tell you all the plane routes here from here to the US. We've had like times where there's been like bad weather because like bad weather over there is kind of a thing and like planes because they just fly everywhere. They're like, oh, plane can't go out today. And I'm like, what do you mean? Like, you know, the outfit's got to get there. There's been some hair raising. So things. what do you do in that case? Yeah. You, can you get some? I usually to stay quite in... quiet. I'll be like monitoring it. And then I have like contacts in certain like shipping departments and you can kind of get so far <laughs> i've had times where i've like tracked an employee down on twitter in the local area and then be like can you help and then they've like helped and managed to get it i remember one time i shipped something to australia to a client but what i didn't realize when i booked it in his address was actually in tasmania which is like a little island like it's not mainland mm this parcel was not going to get there and i was like oh my gosh i managed to get somebody high up at dhl like involved in it it like dropped off the grid for a bit and it went on some unmarked boat to tasmania and it got there in time for the fight and i was like wow i don't know what happened in this gray area of its delivery timeline but it got there it got there in time yeah it sounds like castaway <laughs> no he's got that the fedex yeah honestly yeah. It's so it's so Wilson. stressful so like the shipping element is just the str most stressful part of the entire job because it's out of your hands like once the delivery driver has taken it you're just praying for like it's next three days that it's going to get to wherever it gets to 
of your clients tried to rip off another one of your clients and said, oh, like for example, they might have said that that kit you made for Ben Witt could just make me that. And then you're like, oh, I can't do that. Mm. Oh, have you yeah, got we ask get permission that, first? I'd, I just won't do it. What about for like a 13 year old amateur who's inspired by Ben Whitaker and he wants his shorts? Do you have to, to write, to, write to Ben and say, this kid wants to be you? Or you're like, nah, just, we'll do it anyway. No, if, if they really wanted it, I would have to speak to the fighter whose design it was and be like, look, somebody wants this. Mm. But it's not really, it's never really happened. We get people like, oh, I like what they had, but then I just take over then and then steer them in a direction to something else. I'm like, well, you don't want the same because people are going to be like, oh, that's just his outfit. I'm like, you want this to be you to be recognised as your outfit. Mm. How did the Canelo link up come up come about? Oh, that was a crazy one. I, I was. It was a weekend, and I got this DM on Instagram from some like just an account with like no profile picture, like really under the radar like hey um would like to talk to you about an outfit if you could like call me when you can and I was like oh hello thank you for your inquiry like it's the weekend we'll be back in on Monday and then like an hour or so passed and then messaged again like please my client's fighting on like May the 6th like if you can call me back and I thought there's only one man that fights on yeah. May the 6th <laughs> like, think go to my weekend so I like I video called this random Instagram account and it was his right hand man. And he was like, said it was for Canelo. And obviously I was like on face, like video call this time. So I'm trying not to look so excited. Right. And I was like punching somebody next to me, like, it's Canelo. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, that was really good. Really? Yeah. What did he say? How much interest does he have, Canelo himself, on the, on the shorts and that? Because he's quite a stylish sort of cat, isn't he? He's wearing his cool. pajamas he, all the time. He likes quite simple shorts design. Like he's not into the sequins or the tassels or anything like too OTT. Like he likes to just get in there and get the job mm. done. Mm. Um, I mean, I've got like under the bright lights, my hair used to go red. Like obviously he's Canelo. Like, mm. do you have to advise him on colours that might clash with his hair? Yeah. Like that? No, we don't have to advise him on colours that clash with his hair. With his or maybe hair. to bring his hair he out. Wear anything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. He wears whatever he wants. Um, he generally will match like the shoes and the gloves. Obviously, like his no boxing. Mm. No yeah, who wins? Band. Are you yeah. like do you do you trump um, boots and gloves? No, or I think they come first. With... Largely because like boots and gloves are quite limited in their availability, so it's a bit like I have to kind of match in with whatever mm. Pantone spec is coming out of the factory. <laughs> can you make boots for someone or could you at least change the color for them we exclusive here we are actually in the process of developing a fight label shoe which is Ooh. quite special it's pretty beautiful what, a fight label boxing boot yeah nice Ooh. it's pretty beautiful gotta go high top because everyone's doing low top and it's boring yeah. and it doesn't work uh, the wrestling style shoe the lower one i'm not a fan you i mean like space, canelo loves you, like the mizuno, mizuno shoe the with the flap over. thing yeah it reminds me of like a golf old school yeah, football it's an old football boot yeah. yeah yeah and he's now created his own boots with that flap that's like pretty much an identical version of the a rip off one yeah mm. mine's quite different obviously everything that i do is a <laughs> bit different um is that a set color or is it going to be like available in variety avail available in a variety of colors okay the fight label boxing yeah. boot we're a bit premature yeah we're you know a few months off yet but that's kind of the plan. That's exciting. Very yeah. exciting. That's exciting. Is he going to have any um, figure skating influences as well? Massive blade on the bottom. Yeah. <laughs> blade on the bottom. Great edges. <laughs> um, no, not figure skating. No, no it's just going to be very stylish. Like, aesthetically very nice to look at. Like, all the fight label things that we do, like, look cool. Is it going to be available to buy for the public? Yeah. Okay. Not just pros. Anybody yeah. can buy, just buy it. it on the website. You could just wear it fashion. Like, you don't have to be a fighter. You might just want to wear it because it's cool. Circular 2002. Everyone was wearing them. Football, uh, boxing boots were in. You could get yeah, them like True, yeah. direct or Lonsdale. Yeah, I remember the little Lonsdale ones. Yeah. Um, everyone, yeah, it's all, like all the in the were wandering um, around in them. Barbie movie when Ryan Gosling as Ken is like wearing boxing boots for yeah. the entire movie. It's like in a yeah. fur coat. So the haven't seen it. Yeah. But you, heard you great things, yeah. It'll do good things for you actually. <laughs> wise fur coat and boxing boots are yeah. the takeaway. Yeah. <laughs> so you got it so you're gonna be able to buy can you buy like fight label shorts off the off the peg, so to speak? No. We kind of wanna keep the shorts thing a 
an exclusive thing. I mm. don't really want to kind of go down the mass produced road of shorts. We are launching um, an apparel line that's more fashion based. So it's not so much like just t shirts with the fight label logo on. It's a bit more kind of. We've kind of brought fashion into boxing. So I kind of want to bring boxing into fashion. So it's kind of not your typical. So it's stuff you might wear out for a drink or to a fight that's, you know, like if you went to a football game. Everybody wears football t-shirts. But if you go to a fight, I think because of the nature of a fight being in an evening, people tend to dress up a bit more for a fight than they would, say, a football game because that would be in the daytime. Mm. So it's kind of more elevated, smart, casual kind of wear. Sounds great. Sounds bloody great. I think that's, that's a, bit a glitzy. missing link. Yeah, yeah. yeah. it is. Well, fuck, we should have done that. Yeah, well... The yeah. merch. You yeah. need to get yeah. in there on the merch. Yeah. yeah. I brought out polo shirts for a little bit. That doesn't surprise me at didn't, all. Didn't, 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 <laughs> Did not didn't catch hit. on. <laughs> no, yeah. I mean, I wasn't... I didn't invest as much time in it as I'm sure you would have. So I just, like, picked, you know, off the catalogue, that polo shirt. Is that one Gucci shut you down? Put the well? logo on it. Yeah. Gucci shut you down. They didn't. No, we, we beat Gucci. Yeah. G, I was GG, yeah. so... You were GG. Um, yeah, I tried to bring out or I tried to pattern Gigi and, and Gucci wasn't happy with it mm. but um, yeah Gucci won <laughs> don't <laughs> well, surprise me tried. Yeah. you haven't got to name any names but have there been any absolute nightmare clients wankers where you've been like this is this anyone is not really... paid you who's that oh uh, no everybody pays the bills good which is good I kind of hold stuff to ransom, so it's like, oh, you'll not yeah. get it yeah, you until you've shorts, paid. Mate. <laughs> Haven't you got it's like, a you're fine in your pants yeah. if you don't pay me. So. <laughs> and anyone been a nightmare? You can name them as well. I can't name, name and shame. people. No, I love all my clients. They're all lovely. Um, that surprises some me. Some like, you get nightmare. I mean, I get it because it's stressful that like, you try and make weight and all these things, sponsors, blah, blah, blah. It's, you know, it's a lot. But th- I guess I'm kind of in a bit of a good position that the shorts are like the nice bit. You're not dieting. Yeah, it's, it's not true. about the training. This is like the cherry it's on the top exciting of the cake. Bit. This is the good bit. Mm. So I kind of get the good side of the fighters, I guess. Mm. Um, I guess it's more nightmare stuff with like sponsors changing last minute and then you've done the outfit and then that's got to come off or, you know, that kind of headache. But. Are you making a lot of kit for female fighters at the moment? Yeah. And is that different? And is that even more exciting because it's maybe a little bit more relatable to you being a little a, bit? A girl. I, I guess I've kind of monopolized the sports bra market <laughs> because we do very like elaborate, beautiful, metallic, stretchy sports bras covered in crystals and stuff, which is kind of my world from <laughs> the ice skating stuff. So, you know, we do it in our sleep, um, which is cool and it matches the shorts perfectly. So that's. That's quite good. Um, we we actually started, before I ever made a pair of fight shorts, I'd done some ring girl outfits, which were kind of, you know, along the lines of the leotard world, but crop top and little hot pant things. And then we do all of that for like Forged for Conor McGregor's brand now. They've literally just ordered like 40 outfits for St. Patrick's Day weekends. And that's <laughs> fun <and laughs> games at the moment. <laughs> Have you got a feature, George? I've got a feature. Have you actually? I've got the best feature. Is it the best we've one we've ever done? done? Yes. The best one? It's the very well, best. Well, we should one. have a break first then. All right. Re- re- compose ourselves and then come back. I'm George Groves. He's Deck. And if you haven't heard, the George Groves Boxing Club is going live. And tickets are on sale right now. Nice. Our first ever live event, George. Are we going to start off on a nice low-key venue? Absolutely not. No. We are taking on the world-famous Shepherd's Bush Empire and it is Frotch Groves free. It is 10 years deck since mine and Frotch's fight at Wembley Stadium. So I've gone and got Mr. Frotch to come down all the way down to the Shepherd's Bush Empire and we're going to tussle it out again in podcast form. Nice. You could get the bus there again. Should we brainstorm a few other ideas? It's going to be uh, the feature, and it will be oh. the best feature we've ever done. You, yeah. Maybe you and Carl could have a duel. We'll be crowdsourcing. For the, for the most Mike part. Skinner's coming. He's crowd surfing. 50 Cent's going to buy the first three rows anyway. I don't think we can promise this. Frotch Groves free, a decade in the making. Tickets are on sale now. Listen to the George Groves Boxing Club podcast for all the details. Right, we're back. We're back. 
Right, we are back, Sophie, with the best feature that we've ever is done. Is this the best one? I'm glad so, that you've saved the best one for yeah. my arrival. We have, yeah. Yeah, he was um, insistent upon it. So, each and every week we do a feature. Uh, this week is a quiz. Oh, makes makes change. It's a quiz. So, are you up for the quiz? I'm up for a quiz. Mm. Right, we're up for the quiz. Right, so the name of the quiz this week is Sophie from Fight Label. Mm. Caned and labelled. That's so so are you gonna get cane See, and label? There, there was one yeah, cane and label. Get, cane and label. There was once a time, Sophie, where we all used to kind of come up with the ideas for the names, but sometimes okay. George just does it in secret, comes up with a name, comes up with the quiz concept. Unlike you with the shorts, really. Okay. Cane and label. So what's the what's the vibe then? What's the rules? So um Cane and Label. I've got a series of questions about well, fighters essentially being labelled. Okay. Um for our uh so for our tender. history, right? <laughs> So, um, some are good, some may be good, some may be shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, uh, about right. you I guess, do you want to go first or second? I'll go second. Mm. Second, all right. Is that brave, choice? Mm. Oh, I didn't like the reaction yeah. there. This <laughs> is, um, yeah, this is good. Okay, right. Okay. First question, nice, easy one. Yeah. Off the bat, right. Who was labelled the mummy? I'm just going to leave it at that for you. George Foreman. Yeah. Yeah. See, I wouldn't know that. Yeah, well, now you're in deep shit. Yeah, so That's why I knew to go <laughs> second. I'm not yeah. going to know the answer Muhammad to this. Muhammad Ali labelled him the mummy, the mummy. didn't he? Yeah. He did oh, the okay. good little thing. That was 1974. Yeah. Right. Rumbling jungle. Uh, this one, you might know, you might not, right? So, okay. uh <laughs> <laughs> I was laughing already. <laughs> Tyson Fury is a great labeller, isn't he? So, he's labelled Deontay Wilder a dosser. Um, Usyk a gappy tooth ugly bastard or something. Um, and Vladimir Klitschko, he labelled a pussy, right? But Klitschko came back uh, and labelled him after a dictator. Oh, fuck. So what dictator did he call Fury in 2016? I don't know. I was there when he said it and it was like, oh, my God. It must be bad. Is this not going to make the edit? It's bad. Oh, my God. God. This is terrible. Think think World War II. Yeah, how many dictators do you know? Hitler. Hitler, yes. Oh, Oh, no. (laughs) Those are the That's days. Awful. That was at Stanglevert in the training camp. Yeah, yeah it was. Um, oh, you got the question right. Yeah, yeah exactly. Right. Yeah. right, you'll know this one. So this is how it's come. It's come full set for you. Right, on, which British fighter? Oh, which British fighter is labelled the baddest nerd on the planet? Brandon Scott. Yes. Legend, Brandon Scott. He's well, back. He's on the. He's back in back in business after his hand injury. Right, Sophie. Who did Lawrence Coley label as the hardest hitting heavyweight in the world in 2022? The Ooh. hardest hitting. I don't know. Who might have he been around? Chris. Bill and Smith, no. He would love that, but he no. would love that. I was <laughs> going to say, he's, the hard- no, he's, a heavy, he's a heavyweight. Is it? Hardest hitting heavyweight. Who did he call the hardest hitting heavyweight? Someone he sparred, obviously. Yeah. You'd have thought. Someone, someone who's hit him. <laughs> Joshua? No, it wasn't Joshua. No. He sparred Joshua. Can I have a guess? Well, Babbage. <laughs> Daniel Dubois. Oh. So he was in the gym with Dubois, wasn't biggest he? Biggest hitter. Okay. He'd sparred Fury and Joshua, but he said that Daniel was a bigger hitter. Mm. Yeah. And right. that's funny because isn't that who um, Moses Thomas said was the, his hardest spar as well, was Daniel Dubois? When oh, we had him on the yeah. pod. Yeah. yeah. I think he can work. Dubois coming. Yeah. Right. Paulie Malinaji was in the press in November last year when he labelled who as the most overrated boxer of all time. I don't know if that's classic Paulie to say something like that. Yeah. Mm, most overrated boxer of all time. Who's he going to upset most? Golovkin? Nah. Pass it over. Canelo? No, it was uh, Joe Calzaghi. Oh, fuck it. Yeah, he said Calzaghi, 46 and 0 shot back. He tweeted, Who's the worst world champion of all time? Apart from Melanagi. <laughs> <laughs> but he said he's the most overrated, Joe Calzaghi. Yeah. Fuck it now. It's harsh, isn't it? Yeah, a bit harsh. Right. Tyson Fury in 2012. It's not another dictator, is it? Labelled. <laughs> no, he I labelled don't want Kevin. Those questions. <laughs> yeah. In 2012, Tyson Fury labelled Kevin Johnson what ahead of their fight. <laughs> Right, he says, "Yes, I'm the ultimate specimen of a man. Look at the state of this man. <laughs> Let's have a look at your belly. Come on, take your shirt off. 
A real what? Right, I'll give you some options. Did he say, it's... <laughs> Did he say, is it A, a real toad? B, a real fat pudding? Or C, a real gone kid? I'm going to go C. Could be any of them. I'm going to go C. What, real gone kid? Yeah. No. Nah. Was it B? <laughs> uh, he called him a, a, uh, a fat pudding. <laughs> Wonderful oh. insult. <laughs> right. Emmanuel Williams, Deck, mm -hmm. right, made his debut in 2019. Do you know this guy? Yep. Right. And he was labelled what? Is that it? Yep. He was labelled the... Uh, the new Muhammad Ali. No, the worst professional fighter <laughs> in the world. <laughs> uh, he finished up 0-4 and four, uh, and he lost with knockout losses in the first round. Shout out Manuel Williams. We should get him on. Right. He hasn't fought since, poor fella. No, right. Last one. I think you'll get this one. Go on. As well. right. They could draw it. The last, the last question was before my time. I only walked into boxing in 2014. Yeah, true. Yeah, right. You, it's, you'll be fine with this. This is 2022, right? Okay. Who was labelled a monster for drinking a glass of their fighter's sweat? Oh, that's awful. Yeah, that's <laughs> who gross. would do that? That's really that gross. Is, yeah, yeah I'm trying I don't know to, who I can that remember is. it, but I'm trying so to... 2022, the Ugh. trainer drank a glass of oh, a fighter's sweat. Oh, I have no sweat. idea, but that makes me feel unwell. <laughs> they were out in Future Ventura. Fort Ventura. Oh, Ventura. I know it. Oh. Ahead of his clash. You must know it is. <laughs> I don't know. Ahead who of his clash with Amir yeah. Khan. Is this the trainer or the fighter? The, yeah, I need the trainer's aren't They the twisted the, the t-shirt yeah. into a glass. Not, not dumb. Was it? Yeah. <gasps> That's awful. I didn't know he did that. Dom Ingle. Dominic Ingle, yeah. Don't the paint monster. all Sheffield people yeah. like that. <laughs> That's not only right that you finished on a good the Sheffield question. I remember that clip. Mm. For Aventura. Yeah, he was labelled a monster for that. Um, I think that might be a draw. I've got a tiebreaker. Have you? Go on, okay, go on. Tiebreaker. Right. Closest wins, right? Yep. American Abe Label. That's that's the only link <laughs> yeah. to this question. Right. Retired from boxing with a record of 33, 21, and 14. But I want to know, what year did he hang up the gloves? I reckon it was 1957. You can go no. higher or lower. I'm going to go higher. No. No. <laughs> 1918. Um, 18. What's his name? Abe Label. Abe Label. Abe Label. Uh, well, I win. Unlucky, Sophie. Maybe next Unlucky, time. Unlucky, next um, time. So your 10 years have been going, like we said. What does yeah. what does the operation look like now compared to how it did? Like how big's the, how big's the mean, whole situation? Like the team is probably only a couple people bigger than it was, to be honest. Um, we keep everything close so we don't have i feel like the bigger you go sometimes the quality can filter down um so we've kind of kept everything close and i never really wanted to grow the custom side like i quite like sitting at the top of the tree working with the the top fighters because not only not from just the fact that they're you know better fighters but it's your work gets seen on a stage where it can be appreciated and recognized you know if i was doing all this kind of elaborate work for lower levels that aren't broadcast anywhere as great as it is it's not kind of doing me any favors you know it's not i can't watch my work and be like oh that was great unless i went to some small hall fight to, mm. to watch it so kind of the operation side is i guess it's doubled but it's not kind of you know we've not got a factory with 40 sewing machines and 80 staff and all of this stuff we kind of make everything in house it's very much like a couture fashion house like if you like when you watch like hawk couture fashion week and you'll you'll see behind the scenes it's like people in white lab coats like making like these beautiful things we don't wear white lab coats but you know it's a very detailed process um which i like kind of it's the other side of the business that's grown more in terms of the outreach and you know managing social media and the world that we live in now and me talking about it and Things like that that's changed. Back then, I didn't know anyone or anything about boxing, and I kind of just meandered my way through in my own little world and then arrived where we are now. Which it's mm. an incredible success story. I mean, yeah. in terms of, like, the the players that you work with, you know, the 
the massive massive names yeah like, it's it's pretty you, special um like when we started doing the creed movies that was pretty cool in fact i remember the first creed movie and this was really strange sylvester stallone was in sheffield to do an evening with sylvester stallone and i'd just been reached out to to do the outfits for michael b jordan and sylvester and i remember emailing the back i was like this is a strange one but sly is in sheffield and the first time i ever met sly i was like hello shook his hand got the tape measure out and measured it <laughs> which is a really weird experience and then you know we did creed 2 and i was on set in philadelphia for creed 2 which was amazing and then we just did creed 3 for the last one so it's really exciting like the things that have kind of come from it aside from regular fight night every week it's kind of the bigger picture that is incredible mm. that yeah. is incredible he loves slows well, yeah so what what, yeah, what was he like, like what? measure him <laughs> <laughs> yeah i would love that job um <laughs> what was he like in terms of did he did, does he choose what his costume's like or does someone no, in production the do kind that? of the wardrobe department wardrobe will department. decide and then i think because i'm from real life boxing and they wanted to make it as authentic as possible like for them to understand oh it'd have certain sponsors on and certain things like in creed 2 because they i was like saying oh you know the team wouldn't turn up to the way and just wearing whatever they wanted they'd all be wearing like team track suits and then for them to kind of they couldn't get clear on some sense like certain sponsors for the movie so i was like well you can stick fight label on there so like in the movie they were like got fight label stuff on because it was easy for me to go yeah. i'm in charge i clear it <laughs> that's so that was great cool. yeah, yeah. That is great yeah was that was that the most surreal part like what's the most surreal part of the last decade for you oh there's been that many been quite weird moments. on a film set. if i was supposed to be in creed 2 we shot a whole scene which was the after party of the fight but it was the fight that Michael B. Jordan's character lost. Spoiler alert. We fought, we fought well, this is in Creed 2. We fought, mm. like, we filmed all night from like 5.30 p.m. till 5.30 a.m. And I was going to be the lead cocktail waitress in the nightclub. Had to go around, like, serve. Were they one cocktail drinks. waitress short, or did you say, mm. no, nah, I left this? Yeah, they were one short, so they, like, let me do it. And then they scrapped the whole scene. They were like, oh, there probably wouldn't be a party, or we wouldn't oh, really. Oh, lost. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I was like, what? That was my like starring time, yeah. role. Yeah. <laughs> You've done a mood board floor. for that scene yeah. and but everything. I was so prepared. It was. I did have an awful dress on and like some really insanely high heels. It wasn't really my vibe, but it was exciting nevertheless. Mm. And did you have time to make a custom pair of um, sly shorts like you did for Mayweather? Upon meeting him the first time with no, his face and crystallized, like I didn't that was that would have been great. Mm, it's the trick. I do have replicas of the shorts I've made for the movie, which Michael B. Jordan's like signed, which is cool. That's cool. They're on display at the office, which is nice. I have a replica pair of the ones I made for Floyd Mayweather when he fought McGregor, and Floyd signed those and stuff. So it's, there's some cool things that have come from it. There are like so many surreal moments, especially like with Floyd, because he's kind of the biggest name or has been the biggest name in the sport and um you know over the years like being at his house and like just mad things that have just come from it i think gosh this is pretty nuts <laughs> mm. as, as i mentioned that was the big that was your big target your goal was like, i really want to make mayweather shorts so now what's the big goal like, what's the big dream the for big fight goal. Label? i guess my dreams have changed a little bit now it's not so much like like because if somebody says who do you want to work with like after i did floyd it was a bit like canelo was the next one mm. And I just wait for it to come. Like, I think I just manifest it and then hope that it'll happen at some point. And then he has, like, Canelo then came. And then it was like, well, there isn't really anybody kind of left. You've them now. all off now. Yeah. So now my dreams and goals and visions kind of align differently. Like, how can I expand Fight Label beyond just the ring? So, because fashion, like, I'm a fashion designer by trade. That's my thing. Like, obviously, I'm in sports, but fashion as well. So that's where i see kind of the future just more fashionable outfits like i just want to kind of keep pushing the boundaries of sports fashion especially in boxing because that's kind of my life now but mm. i i don't want to just kind of think oh it's another pair of shorts or so i think it's more like the product lines and that direction really so any other sports have you done any other sports um, apart from figure skating apart from no just figure skating, figure skating none, none, none will give you the buzz the boxing gives you because no. you just a lot of them are like team sports if, if you think about especially at the Olympics like if you think about what athletes wear 
like Winter Olympics, there's only ice skating that they wear something that enhances their performance because they'll get marked on like the costume as part of the performance. All the other sports, it's generally they're just wearing the team kit. Mm. So there's only boxing really where you're not given, obviously back in like early days, it's like red shorts, blue shorts, kind mm. of red corner, blue corner outfits. Mm. But it's as you progress, it be, kind of becomes your own persona to have your own shorts. So if all of a sudden you'd been having your own shorts and somebody's like, oh no, you just have to put these on now, you'd be a bit like, well, that's terrible. Mm. They should do that. Like, you know, obviously in figure skating, they judge on your costume. They should do, they should judge on your shorts in if, boxing. Yeah, if it's a draw, you can lose who's them. got yeah. the best shorts. <laughs> yeah. I am. Um, the judges ben yeah. nah. Ben's winning. <laughs> yeah. I, um, I came out of retirement from figure skating costumes for this last season for our like GB number one ice dance couple because I used to do their costumes many years ago and then for this season they were like please you've got to do it no one else can do this because they skated to the music from Creed and Rocky <laughs> so they were like you know boxing so you can translate boxing onto the ice and I did so I've come out for one season and I've been nominated for costume designer of the year. <laughs> just this one costume which was crazy mm. Um, well done still yeah. doing it congratulations still, like, got it. still got still it got still got it, it. still got it did you, with that in mind did you watch Ricky Hatton dancing on ice I did watch Ricky on dancing yeah. on what ice what was his outfit like well week Shite. one they put him in like a fake novelty like boxing outfit which saddens me when people think boxing and they think these like cheap polyester shiny satin outfits with stripes on them like that's what boxing is mm. But yeah, that was like the perfect merge me. of your world, of your two worlds. Yeah. Ricky Hatton on Dancing on Ice. Ricky Hatton on Dancing Because I work with Campbell, I work with his son. Mm. Um, of course, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's fun. Um, but yeah, Ricky. I don't think Ricky was born to be a figure skater. Uh, born to skate, was I think he? he was born to box. <laughs> born to fight. He was. Uh, George, we need one more thing. Yeah, one this more could thing. Could be interesting this yeah, one. Yeah, so we ask each and every guest to give us a track for our playlist on Spotify, <gasps> The Ring Walk. So we want to know what would be your chosen music for your ring walk. But also we've got to expand this question like what would you wear? Yeah, what's the kit? <sighs> That's such a hard question. You're at the boxing all the time. You, you're probably super obsessed about how the guys are looking, but how, what are you listening to at mm. this point? Yeah. Well, the outfit's kind of taken over my brain right now. It's a bit like asking me as a designer, like, would you design your own wedding dress? And mm. part of me, because I sew and design for a living, I'm like, absolutely not. Like, this is the one time it'd Someone be nice for somebody else yeah. to do Get that Susie job. Wong to do the shorts. How would the... <laughs> Shout yeah, out I... Susie Wong. Shout out Susie Wong. I think that, you know, it's it, it's so difficult. It's like I'm very decisive with my clients. I'm like, right, mm. you're wearing this. We're designing this. This is it. But if it was me, yeah, I'm like the most indecisive... Only. There'd probably be like eight outfits and I still probably wouldn't choose any of them by the end of it. Yeah, what, co what colour? What would be cool is if you just came out in black. Just well, I'm in all black today. Yeah. Um, Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Just a black towel, towel, towel with it. a hole cut in it. Yeah, yeah. Little, <laughs> be real. Little black boots. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And what's the tune? I just got back from Vegas and they were playing this one song in the club and I can't like what get it out it? of my head. Wookie, My Girl. Have you heard it? No. It's but a, I, we'll put it on banger. the playlist. It's great. Is it good for a ring walk? Yeah, it, get, it would get people going for sure, yeah. Okay, so if you're coming out to Wookie my girl, what 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 colour? Just give us the colour of the kit. And what's the It venue? would be bright. It would be... Red red and white. Hot pink. Hot pink. I'm pink. not... Yeah. yeah, it'd be hot pink. Okay. Think like Derek Chisora, the girl dad yeah, outfit yeah. I did for him. Oh, that was you? That was me, yeah. Mm. That, was another, that, that was another Barbie homage. Oh, know. yes. Yeah. That was it a, was, wasn't it? Yeah. Not Santa Claus then, sure? sure. Not Santa. Not Santa. No. So uh, hot pink, uh, Wookie, my girl. What uh, is the venue? Because you've been ringside at most of them. I've been to all of them. Yeah. It would have to be oh, the best fight I ever went to. Like the best venue was the AT and T st oh. Stadium in Canelo. Arlington in Texas. Is that Canelo, Billy Joe? No, it was Mikey Garcia, Errol, and Errol Spence. Yeah, yeah, that was a great fight. Whose shorts did you do? Mikey. Oh, did you? Yeah. Okay. I mean, you're going to have to get all your Sheffield family and friends to go to Arlington, Texas. But I'm sure they would for that They'll one night only. It. I mean, there's not much else there but the stadium. Yeah. You'll know how to get there as well, the quickest way. Yeah. Like. Or actually, no, I want to change. I would want to fight at the Allegiant Stadium in Vegas because no one's fought there Ooh. yet. Or the Sphere. Oh, the Sphere would be good. That would be good. Yeah. I'm sure we could sort that out. Who would you fight? Who would I fight? I mm. don't know. 
We'll find you in a polo. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks so much for coming on. Yeah. That's been thanks great. for having me. That's I've loved sweet. it. No. Shorts, sorted. Sorted, kit, everything. Yeah. There's nothing. And Fashion, tick. Yeah. So we haven't got to be an absolute superstar boxer to reach out to you and get kit. If they no. want to get in touch and get some fight label stuff, if how do they go wanna, about it? They just need to either email me, sophie at fightlabel.co.uk or slide into the DMs at fight label. Yes, and we're looking out for boxing boots that are coming soon. Yeah. Clothing. And fashion. clothing range. Yeah. Yeah. Is that going to be like on the high street or is that online? I'm, it will be online and I'm also looking at going to retailers as well, Ooh, which will be nice. Incredible stuff. So we're going to see Fight Label, like Entourage, Kit. Taking fight. over. Yeah, they're all going to show up. And everyone's going to be nice and smart. We're taking yeah. over. It's going to be like this. It's going to be like a bit sparkly, a bit extra, a bit... I mean, we're not talking kind of like Philip Plem level sparkle, but there's like a little bit. If you come into Fight Label, you want a little bit of sparkle. Yeah, so. I agree. Well, that's the kit sorted. Lovely. So exactly. Perfect. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you.